that heat, the heat shield on the Apollo anyway, was made up of 375,000 individual honeycomb cells about the size of your thumbnail. Each one of those was individually filled by hand, shooting this, what they call an ablative resonant. And as they came down in through the Earth's atmosphere, <laughs> that stuff just started to char and burn off. The astronauts were sitting there in short sleeves and sleeve comfort, you know? Things only about two inches thick. Amazing part of the overall capsule itself. Let me show you what the capsule looked like once we recovered it. Remember how nice and shiny it was when, when we were over in Space Hall? Here's what it looked like after it came back down. That's the Columbia. Before they took it away from us, they've got a they've got a mock-up in there in the uh, in the center seat of it. I mean, it it was scorched up big time. Finally, as they come down through, the drone chute pops, pulls out three big parachutes, and they land in the ocean. They have by that time they have really perfected the ability to pinpoint their landings, so there are people just waiting for them to hit the ground, and the pararescue people would come and take them off. By the way. The Apollo 11 guys, they didn't get to go home to Mama and the kids after that. They went into quarantine for 21 days. And uh, they actually have one of the quarantine vehicles. It looks like a, uh, a uh, kind of like a Winnebago. What, what's the one that's real slick? This Airstream. Something, Airstream. The Airstream. Airstream. Looks like an Airstream trailer. We've got one out there. So that's basically how it worked. Okay, so last two trick questions. You ready? Here we go. You've got to be tough. How many astronauts, how many missions actually went to the moon, landed on the moon, and people got out and walked around? How One. many? One. No? No. Six. 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 Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Which one didn't make it? 13. 13. Okay, what happened with 13? Remember what happened? Okay. Tom Hanks uh, you took my line. <laughs> they, they had a blowout. They had a blowout in the service module, and they basically had to use the lunar module as a uh, uh, as a lifeboat. They referred to it as their lifeboat. And that was going to be my last question. How, you know, how was Apollo 13 really saved? And the answer is because Tom Hanks was the mission commander on it, right? Okay. Questions on the lunar module? Yes. I just had a question about, I know that I've heard NASA talk about how difficult it is to get past the Van Allen radiation belts. Mm -hmm. How in, back in the 60s, and don't get me wrong, that thing looks slightly rickety, mm -hmm. how did that make it past that sea of radiation, as they call it, twice? Okay. The way they did it was uh, through information we learned from Explorer 1, as I mentioned to you, we had an idea where the belts are. The belts are not even in intensity. So as we came out, we would skirt the outsides of it as they went around. Now, I can tell you as an airline pilot, we played this game with radiation all the time. Part of our flight plans, if the radiation was really bad, they would drop our cruising levels down so we weren't in that. So it's not as bad as you think, and they were able to maneuver around it. But the problem was, when we initially started, they didn't know physically where they are. And there are actually two belts. There's kind of an inner belt, and there's an outer belt. Does okay. that answer your question? It does, thank you. You're, you're more than welcome. Other questions? Folks, one last question. One more. Um, <laughs> this doesn't necessarily have to do with the, the craft itself, but maybe you don't know this, but how exactly does um, propulsion work in a vacuum? You know, you, you kind of need something to push off of for that opposite reaction. How does like a combustion and propulsion work in a vacuum of nothingness, essentially? <laughs> My understanding is it does not take much at all. Go ahead. You have the engine building solid rockets for a moment. Oh, there we go. He's got oh, somebody right. who can tell me. The comb down there, Yeah. as the gases flow out, Do you mind that's if I record? what they push it no. Okay, that'd be yeah. great for this I video I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, as long as the gas comes out that cone, uh -huh. and it, as it does, it expands. Because it's been, ex it, if you look inside the cone, there's a very small area of diameter. So when the gas flows through there, it accelerates. And that acceleration, then as it expands, is what pushes on the cone. Interesting. Thank you for answering that for me. Yeah. Don't forget that one. Okay, <laughs> folks. 
We started with the Wright Brothers, December 17, 1903. We ended here with the Lunar Miles, July of 1969. 66 years from the first heavier-than-air flight until we put a man on the moon. Truly, I think, one of the, the greatest stories almost ever told, actually ever told. That's all I got for it, folks. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, moving us and moving on. And do that. Thank you.